Hi, my name is Amanda Ripley, and I'm a journalist who writes for The Atlantic, and I also wrote a book called The Smartest Kids in the World and How They Got That Way. What's lacking in the U.S. education system, if we had to just choose one thing, is focus. There's a lot of noise and distraction and infighting in education in the United States. And the effect of that is there's not really a consensus about what matters most. And until you have a priority in a complex system like education, it's really hard to make change, right? So we have to build a consensus about what matters most. So we know that what parents do matters a lot. The other interesting and surprising thing we know is that American parents are actually very involved in their kids' education compared to parents around the world. But they are involved differently. And the ways that they tend to be involved, and I'm generalizing obviously, tend to not have much to do with learning. So they're good intentions. There's a lot of hard work, a lot of energy, a lot of spirit. Uh, we have a lot of American parents, you know, um, holding fundraisers and going to games and coaching and doing a lot of very important things, none of which actually statistically have any impact on learning. So what you see in other countries with better outcomes is you see that parents are involved in their kids' education at home. So you're unlikely to see a Finnish parent at their kids' elementary school, um, you know, selling cookies <laughs> or doing anything, actually. What parents are doing in the highest performing countries is they're reading to their kids when they're little, they're talking to their kids, they're engaging them in a constructive conversation, maybe about numbers, maybe about the news, maybe about movies or TV, but that conversation is really important. And in those countries, there's more clarity, there's more focus about what we need parents to do and why. So it's a little easier for parents to prioritize. In 20 years, you know, I think the U.S. system could go one way or another. Um, I worry sometimes that we might be headed towards more of a pressure cooker model that you see in South Korea, in Singapore, China, parts of India. That's a model where, you know, a lot of students are learning at higher levels than you see in the U.S., particularly in math and science. So that's good. But the cost is really high. You know, it's very inefficient for one thing and very, um, joyless for another. So we have to be careful to try to look to other countries as well as models and find ways that um, are demanding more of kids and parents and teachers, but not necessarily working them to death. So if you look at a country like Finland, they're achieving the same results as South Korea, but they're doing it in a much more humane way. And so how do you get there? Well, the way that Finland got there was to really focus on the basic foundation of their system by making it much, much more harder to become a teacher, making the training much more rigorous, really building trust among parents and politicians and kids in the education infrastructure. And then from there, once you have that trust and it is truly a rigorous system, it's easier for people to let the schools do their job and then not need to send their kids to after school tutoring the way you see all over the world increasingly.